Welcome, my name is Vincent Luz with Forex Trading Institute. Please take a couple minutes to read the following risk disclosure. Lesson 1, Introduction to the Forex Market. At the end of this lesson, you will understand what the Forex is. You will understand how to trade the Forex. You will understand that the Forex moves just like the stock market, treasury market, and the futures market. Understand that the Forex can only move in three directions, up, down, and sideways. You will learn the different types of orders used in trading the Forex. You will understand how to place an order in the Forex. And you will learn how to make money in the Forex. You will also learn how to protect yourself financially should the trade not go your way. At Forex Trading Institute, we teach people how to trade. We teach you how to take advantage of the markets before the markets take advantage of you. Never forget this rule, 21 days, 3%. The human mind forgets in three days, 80% of the knowledge it acquires during the next 18 days. The loss of information continues and the human mind will only retain about 3% of the information originally acquired. Basically, this means if you don't review this material, you're going to lose it. You're going to forget this material. Uh, in order for you to become a successful investor, this has to become a habit. That's why we recommend going several times through these CDs, uh, several times attending our live courses and online courses. Write this down. Successful people will do what unsuccessful people won't and can't do. Uh, in order for you to become successful in this market, you got to be willing to do what 90% of the other people uh, do, which is educate themselves. Uh, obviously, by acquiring this education, you've taken the first step in order to become a successful trader. Uh, you need to dedicate yourself and take the time, and I congratulate you for taking the time to become a successful trader and learning how this market works uh, in order for you to be able to take advantage and become profitable in this market. What is the Forex market? The Forex market, uh, it's foreign currency exchange. The traders call it sometimes the spot market or cash market. It's a network of over 4,500 world banks. It is not centralized. Um, there's no physical place of buying and selling like the New York Stock Exchange. All the buying and selling uh, go on electronically. You're going to be connected through a broker, uh, electronically through a platform, and you're going to be executing the trades through the broker connected to one of these 4,500 uh, world banks. Why is it the Forex new to the small investor? In the late 1994, um, margin requirements changed for the small investor. Now a small investor can trade on the Forex like large financial institutions or large investors. A small investor can start trading with as little as $300. That's a great advantage. Uh, opening uh, many accounts can be traded with $300 that open the doors uh, for anybody to start trading in this market. FXTI focuses on the Forex. Uh, the Forex is the largest and most liquid market in the world. It trades over $2 trillion a day. Uh, you can see that in comparison to the stock market, which trades $100 billion, and the treasury market that trades $300 billion. Uh, the benefits of this liquidity is that you're able to get in when you want and get out when you want. Uh, there's always buyers and sellers. It's so liquid. What is trading the financial markets about? It's about not having a boss or employees. It's about not having inventory, receivables, licenses, leases, collectibles, bad debt. The only thing you need to start in this market is a computer and access to the internet. You're going to work your own schedule. Uh, you're not tied to a 9 to 5 job. Uh, you're going to be able to trade uh, anytime you want. This market's 24 hours a day. You're going to be able to work from home uh, or anywhere in the world. Uh, I have the opportunity to teach classes all around the world. And anywhere I go and teach, I could access this market. I could be in a hotel room and be buying and selling. I could be at a McDonald's. I could be at a Starbucks and buying and selling currencies. Uh, it creates your own potential financial independence. Trading is a means of making money. Buying and selling on your computer or from a phone 
Uh, and you're going to see you could trade it electronically or you could call up your broker and place uh, the trades anywhere in the world that make money. Uh, and you're going to put your money to work for you, not you work for your money. You can trade 24 hours a day. Uh, there's three sessions to trade in the Forex. Uh, the Forex opens on Sunday around 2 p.m. Eastern Time and closes Friday at 4 p.m. From Sunday to Friday, this market's open 24 hours a day. I mean, you could place a trade any time. Uh, there's three sessions, active sessions with a lot of liquidity, uh, and most traders want to be trading during one of these sessions. Uh, we have the Asian session from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. We got the European session from 2 a.m. to 11 a.m., and then we got the U.S. session from 8 to 5 p.m. Uh, and especially when there's two markets open, for example, look at the European and Asian session overlap from here from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. This creates a lot of potential during this hour. There's a lot of liquidity. Two big markets open. Then from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, this is one of my favorite times uh, to trade. Uh, a lot of liquidity. A lot of traders I know around the world only trade during those three hours. That's the nice thing about this business. You can trade three hours. You have all the movement uh, could occur during that 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, session. Uh, here you can see the overlaps and how they overlap, and you can see Sydney, uh, Australia, that's where it first starts up on Sunday, uh, and then it overlaps with the Tokyo session, and the Tokyo has a couple of hours where it overlaps with London, and then my favorite session here from London uh, where it overlaps to the New York uh, session. We're going to cover some terminology on the Forex market. Okay, we're going to learn about currency pairs, about a base currency, cross currencies, what's a pip, what's a lot, uh, how to read a Japanese candlestick, market and stop uh, orders, uh, what's a margin call, what's leverage, and what's interest. This is very important. Uh, this lesson is to get you the foundation, and we're going to go through advanced strategies uh, in future lessons. But we need to have a strong foundation, solid foundation, in order to go forward and be able to... Uh, start learning more advanced strategies. First, there's six major currency pairs, and at Forex Trading Institute, we try to focus on these six currency pairs. We got the US dollar and guess the Swiss franc. We got the US dollar and guess the Japanese yen. We got the euro and guess the dollar. We got the Great British pound and guess the dollar. We got the dollar and guess the Canadian dollar. And we got the Australian dollar and guess the US dollar. Uh, as you can see, all currency pairs, uh, obviously if it's a pair, it has two currencies. The, and this is the order and these are the abbreviation. These are the coding abbreviations for each currency pair. For example, you're always going to see CHF as the Swiss franc, uh, GBP as the Great British Pound, EUR as the Euro, AUD as the Australian Dollar. On the left hand side is called the base currency. On the right hand side is called the cross currency. The base currency is always one. Uh, for example, here we're seeing one dollar, and what's going to change is how many Swiss francs takes to buy one dollar. Now here you see the euro, and the euro it's always going to be the base. This is the way it's organized. Uh, the euro here it says it's on the left hand side, so it would be one. And what's going to change is how many dollars does it take to buy one year? And that's what could go increasing in value or decreasing the value. And that's one great thing about this business. It doesn't matter uh, in what economic situation the world's in because there's always going to be one currency that goes up and the other one that goes down. We're going to teach you how to analyze the market to determine which is the one that goes up and which is the one that goes down. Uh, for example, if I believe the euro is going to go up, I want to buy euros, sell dollars, and I'll make money if the euro goes up. Uh, if I believe the euro is going to go down, then I'll buy dollars and sell euros, and I'll make money as the euro goes down and the dollar goes up. Uh, so what I got to be able to do is teach you how to identify which is the currency that's going to go up in the pair. Uh, there's major pairs, and there's also crosses. Uh, you're going to see these are the major uh, pairs. We also have here the New Zealand dollar and the U.S. dollar. And then sometimes you'll see that the dollar, it, uh, the, the crosses are currencies in which the dollar is not uh, involved. For example, a very... Um, one that moves a lot, the Great British Pound against the Japanese Yen and the Euro against the Yen. Uh, these are two big uh, currency pairs and these are called crosses. 
and we can see a review here uh, the currency pair on the left hand side uh, we have the euro which is one and the exchange rate will be how many dollars does it take to buy one euro that's what fluctuates that's what we're going to see on the charts when we get to that uh, here are some of the nicknames uh, the dollar sometimes you're going to see it referred to as the greenback the euro as the fiber um, the great british pound as the cable uh, the CHF as the Swissy or Chiffy, uh, the Australian as the Aussie, the New Zealand dollar, sometimes you're going to hear it as the Kiwi, uh, the Canadian dollar as the Looney, and the, the, obviously the Japanese yen as the Yen. Uh, what is a PIP? Price, the word PIP means price interest points. Okay, let's make an example of this being uh, the Euro's exchange rate. Obviously, the exchange rate fluctuates, so it's not the exact one, it's just an example. Uh, the Euro here, if we've seen the Euro, it would be on the left hand side, would be one. And this would mean that it would take $1.57 to buy one Euro. Now, the fourth decimal place here, the last decimal place here, is called the PIP. Uh, and the definition of a PIP is one one hundredth of one penny. Every time it moves one one hundredth of one penny, we say it moved the PIP. And you're going to see uh, they we refer everything as PIPs, and all our earnings are made in PIPs. It's the single unit. So, for example, if it goes from one fifty seven fifty to one fifty seven sixty, it moved ten PIPs. If it goes from one fifty seven fifty to one fifty seven fifty one, it moved one PIP. Now, what type of accounts? We said we have two different types of accounts. There's standard accounts and mini accounts. Uh, in the stock market, we buy and sell shares or stocks. Uh, in the futures, we buy and sell contracts. Uh, in real estate, we buy and sell properties. In this market, we buy and sell lots. Okay, And you're going to see here, one lot controls 100000 of that currency. Here's an example of $100,000. And in a mini account, one lot controls 10000 now, a great benefit in this market, in order for me to control, if I wanted to invest in the stock market and I wanted to buy $10,000 worth of a particular stock, I had to invest $10,000. Or the broker would give me leverage, uh, means that he'll let me borrow funds, um, and maximum two to one. What does that mean? That I could buy $10,000 worth, and, but I would have to deposit $5,000, two to one leverage. In this market, there's many accounts that give you 200 to 1 leverage. It means all I got to do is invest $50 and I'll be controlling 10,000 due to leverage. Now, on the standard account, I control 100,000 and doesn't require me to invest 100,000, it only requires me to invest $1,000. And how much uh, is the profit? And here we're seeing uh, a currency pair. Uh, each lot, if I buy one mini lot, which it requires a $50,000 uh, $50 investment, and I control 10,000, each pip, okay, or each uh, one one hundredth of a penny, I would make profit of a dollar. If it moves 10 pips, I make $10. If it moves 100 pips, it's $100. And I could show you here, for example, uh, this is the euro, I guess the US dollar. And for example, at and from left to right, uh, the time moves. For example, here was about 8.30. And at 8.30, it was close to a dollar twenty with 60 pips. So it means it took a dollar and 20 cents to buy one euro, okay, with the 60 pips. So for example, if it moved from, uh, like we see it here, that it moved from 8 to about 9.50 uh, in the morning, in about an hour, it moved from 120.60 to 120.80. That was a 20 pip move. So means if I invested $50, I would make $20 profit. Uh, obviously, it was a little more than that because it continued to run all the way here, but it, we just make an example of it moves 20 pips, that $20, uh, that would be almost a 50% return on your investment, and that could occur in an hour. Uh, if I invested one standard lot, which investment was $1,000, which I control 100,000, if it moves one pip, I make $10. If it moves 100 pips, I make $100. If it moves 100 pips, which is a cent move, so when you see in the news that it moves a cent, uh, that's $1,000 for every thousand invested. If I invested 10,000, that'd be $10,000. Okay, so you can see the power of this uh, market.
So when I invest mini lots, I make a dollar a pip. When I invest standard lots, which require a thousand dollar investment, I make ten dollars a pip. Now there's three types of orders, um, and these are basic orders. Later on, we'll go into more advanced order. But the three basic orders are a market order, a limit order, and a stop order. A market order, we buy and sell at whatever the market is right now. Okay, and uh, for example, the price, and that fluctuates from second to second. So when I execute an order and I say I want to buy at market, it's going to execute it at whatever the market price is at that second. Now, when we trade, we also place something that's called a limit order or a stop order. An order, a limit order, is an order placed to enter or exit the market at an exact price, uh, usually for profit. For example, if I buy the euro at 120.00, I could say I want to exit it automatically. I tell the broker when it gets to 120.050, you know, after 50 pips profit, I want to take my profit automatically. Uh, it's like putting it in an autopilot. I don't have to be in front of the computer. I'm telling it when it gets to this price, take my profit. Uh, just like I could put future orders, and we're going to learn about future orders later on uh, in the course, where I could locate and say, I want to buy, if it gets to a certain place, that could also be a buy limit. Uh, a stop order is to protect our risk. For example, I could, and that's the nice thing about this market, I could say the maximum I want to risk in a position. I could say if the market goes down 50 pips, and I locate the price 50 pips down, I say that's the most I'm willing to take uh, risk in a trade. Most traders use Japanese candlesticks, and we're going to learn about Japanese uh, candlesticks. First, the candlesticks have three uh, main components. They have a color, they got a body, and they got a wick. Okay, uh, The body tells us from, for example, and let's say we're looking at an hourly candlestick, and we're going to be looking at a daily candlestick. They measure fluctuations in a given period of time, and we tell it during what given period of time. If we want to see a daily chart, it means each candlestick is worth a day. If we see a four-hour chart, each candlestick will be worth the fluctuation in price in four hours. Or a 60-minute chart means each candle fluctuation in 60 uh, minutes. Now, let's say, just for the example, I'm going to say an hour chart means each candle is worth an hour. It means, say, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, the market opened here, and at 6, it rallied and it closed here. How do I know? Because there's where the candle started, and there's where the candle finished. The open and start of the candle, of the body, will tell us where the price opened and closed. The color is going to tell us if it opened low and closed high, or open high and close low. The wicks, okay, are going to tell us the highest and the lowest that it got during that hour because it could open here and then at the open of the candle, it started at the hour, it started dropping, then the market rallied all the way up here and then it ended up closing here. That's what the story, each candle tells us a, a story. The same thing here occurs if it's a black candle that it opened high and it closed low. And you could program your charting software so it would be any color. Here is an example, white or black. It could be green or uh, red. You're going to see every different uh, charting package has different colors for these candles. And you're going to see that they refer to them sometimes as bullish and bearish candles. A bull, when it attacks, it lifts up its horn. So that's why uh, we refer a market that's rising as a bullish market. A bear, when it attacks, it scratches down. So that's why a market that's falling is referred to as a bearish market. Sometimes we're going to see, and we're going to call them bullish candles and bearish candles. We're seeing a market that goes up or a market that goes down. Now, how do we read a candlestick chart? From left to right, okay, we see the time. For example, December 5th, December 7th, December 8th, December 9th, December 10th. From up to down, okay, here we see the price change. For example, December 7th, the price started at 102.50 and it closed right here, where it closed the day. You see these lines are telling us where the day closed. It closed at 103.50. Uh, from 102.50 from to 103.50, that's a movement of 100 pips. Okay, for example, from 103.00 uh, zero to where it almost got during the day, 105, that's a movement of 200 pips in that day. Okay, so we see, and then up here we could see it's a dollar, and guess the yen. Uh, obviously, the dollar is the base currency. It'd be one, 
and the yen is the cross. So the exchange rate tells us if at this moment, if it was at 102.50, means if I go to Japan, every dollar I trade in, uh, it, they give me 102.50 uh, yen. Okay, so it means that's how we read uh, the chart. The, tar the, the price on the chart tells you how much of the right currency takes to buy one of the less of the left currency. So for example, we're seeing this go up, means the base or the currency on the left is going up. Now, these candles, and you're going to see them here, the white and black candles, uh, the bearish and bullish candles, uh, you're going to learn uh, in the next lesson about candlestick formations. Learning how to trade this market is like learning a new language. And depending on what these candles do, is it tells us if the market is increasing or decreasing. And this market gives us buy and sell signals. For example, here, look at this white candle, big white candle, covering a black candle. A bullish candle carrying a black candle. You see how the body engulfs the prior candle? That's called an engulfing bullish candle. This is one of the buy signals we're going to teach you. And look how the market rallied, rallied, rallied. It went up. And here, two long wicks with very few body, almost at the same part. That's called a tweezer top. And that's a sell signal. It's telling you that the rally is finishing. So if we would have bought here at 102.00 on December 3rd. On December 6th, we saw this sign. It's telling us, take your profit because I'm about to start uh, dropping. And then look at here. It dropped, drop, and they give us again a bullish engulfing, a big white candle covering a black candle. That's a good sign that the market's going to start increasing. I'm going to teach you all these formations in the next uh, lesson. Uh, you're going to be amazed on how this uh, formations tell you what direction. These are the triggers that tells us when to buy, when to sell, obviously in conjunction with all the other analysis that we're going to do in this market. In Forex Training Institute, we're going to show you how to make money when the market goes up, down, or sideways. we got strategies for every single situation in the market. You can be a bull in the market. A bull means we're going to buy first and we're going to exit selling. Uh, it is sometimes referred to as going long or being bullish. If I buy first and sell second, that means I'm bullish or I'm going long. Okay, long doesn't mean I'm going for long pips. It just means I'm buying. The word long means buy. For example, here we can see this uh, where we're looking at the Great British Pound against the U.S. dollar. And look how it gave us that bullish candlestick formation. A white candle covering a black candle that gave us the buy. <clears throat> I put a limit. Okay, I could say when it reaches, I bought near 168.00. I could say when it reaches 184, I want to take my profit. I could put it automatically and that would be a limit order. As long as I could say at 167, I want to put my stop. It means that if the market drops, that's the most I'm willing to take a risk. But if I bought here first and I sold here second, this is a bullish. This is making money as the base currency is going up. And we're going to learn later on we could also make money as the base currency goes down. And we're going to learn about risk management, uh, how we have to take a lot of profit and reduce our risk, minimize our risk. You can be a bear in the market. Bear means we sell first and we exit buying. Okay, for example, here we see, okay, this was the trend line and we had a trend line break here. Okay, and the market started going down. And we're going to learn teach you how to draw these uh, candle these trend lines and recognize these candle formations. Look at this black candle covering this red candle. This is called the engulfing bearish pattern. This is signaling that the market is going to start going down. So it means I could sell first. I could sell at 111 and close my order buying second at 106. Sometimes we get confused. How, how can I sell if I haven't bought? Uh, this is, remember, when we give $50 to a broker, it's like giving them a deposit. And I was like giving an example of a watch. If like, it's just like if I say, here's $50, let me borrow your watch. And I sell your watch at $111. Obviously, I just gave you $50 to hold your watch. It wasn't my watch. I sold it first at $111. Now I sold it because tomorrow I believe that the market's going to go down or in the future I believe the value is going to go down and by the time I have to re, uh, return that watch to you, 
I'm gonna find it at a cheaper price. And then, for example, here I found it at 106. So I buy the watch at 106 and I return it to you. And I bought it second. Look how I sold first at 111 and I bought that watch at 106. I made those five dollars and then you return my uh, deposit because I closed my position. Uh, just replace the watch with the dollar here and the dollar against the yen. I sell the dollar against the yen at 111 and then I buy it to close it at 106. So I sold first and exited buying. That's called shorting the market or being bearish. Now margin calls, we're gonna learn uh, a little later on, uh, we're gonna go more detail into margin calls, I'm just gonna give you an introduction. Uh, a margin call into securities means the broker calls you up on the phone and says, you need to deposit more money because the position went against you. Uh, that's when they lent you uh, money. Now a margin call here means when, if I invest, if I had $300 in my account and I buy one mini lot, okay, that means I'm using $50, of that money in deposit means I have 250 in usable margin, the difference between the lot position and what I had in my account. If the market would go against me in the forex market, uh, let's say I break all the rules and I don't put a stop uh, like we teach you, and it goes against me 250 pips in a mini account or $250 means I don't have no more money left and I would automatically be margin called, means the broker will liquidate your position. You can never go negative here. He's not going to call you, you need the more money because the maximum uh, you have in risk is what's in your account. Uh, brokers in the Forex automatically liquidate your position and you're going to see on your screen pop up what's called a margin call. Leverage. Uh, leverage means that if I tell you we have a hundred to one leverage means for every dollar I put they let me control a hundred times that. I could control a hundred dollars worth of trading. If I tell you 201 leverage, it means for every dollar I put, I can control $200 worth. Interest. Uh, we're going to learn ab about interest. I have a whole lesson on interest and interest differentials. You're going to see that in the Forex, on top of making money on the pips, there's also an interest that could be credited or debited depending on the interest uh, differential between the currency. For example, I'm buying the Great British Pound against the dollar. I got to see what's the interest the pound's paying versus what's the interest the dollar's paying. And if I bought the pound, I bought a currency with a higher interest, I'm going to be credited interest. If I sold the pound and bought the dollar, and let's say, for example, and these uh, interest rates are always changing, let's say that the pound, at the moment you're hearing these uh, videos, the pound has a higher interest rate. Uh, and let's say I sold the pound and bought dollars, means I bought a currency with less interest, means I get debited at the end of the day if I hold the position for more than a day. Uh, but we're going to go more in detail. We just want to know that there's interest in the market. Okay, uh, obviously, what are we trading in the market? Uh, traders in the Forex are buying and selling currencies. Uh, traders in the stock market are buying and selling stocks. Uh, obviously, shares are usually bought in increments of 100, uh, or option contracts in increments of 100. Uh, in this, we buy lots. And remember, uh, we have a mini lot that we control 10,000, uh, which pays us a dollar a pip. And in the standard lot that we control 100,000, it pays us $10 a pip. Now, uh, what's the difference in profit? Uh, for example, we can see here, we invested $1,000 in the Forex and it moves one point or 100 pips. We would make $1,000 on our investment. It means we invested 1,000, we made 1,000 in profit. We still have our 1,000 in total. We would have in our account 2,000 because we had the 1,000 we started plus the 1,000 profit. That's 100% return on investment. Now, if I bought us in the stock market, I've had $1,000 and I bought us shares uh, that were going for $100, it means I could buy 10 shares. If it moves one point or $1 uh, and I had, I had 10 shares, I made $10. I invested $1,000 to buy $10 to make $10. That's a 1% return. So as you can see, I'm not saying the stock market is bad. I'm just saying this market gives us a lot more potential. Uh, with less money, we can make a lot more uh, profit. Okay, uh, now what's the difference between opening a stock trading account and a forex trading account or a currency trading account? Uh, obviously, you open up with a broker. Uh, we can help you find a broker. Uh, there's different brokers that we use. Uh, you fill out an application, okay, in the forex. Uh, they're going to ask you your experience. If you had trading, you don't need experience. It's just an NFA requires them to ask you about 
uh, your experience. Um, you're going to have to provide an ID, a copy of a light uh, bill or phone bill or something verifying your address. And they process it. It usually takes a couple of days. Uh, then you deposit money. You can deposit through a wire uh, transfer or through a credit card online, uh, straight with a broker, or you could deposit a check. Uh, you don't need margin, uh, you don't need a credit check to get a margin approval. Okay. Uh, the same thing happens with a, uh, in the stock market, they usually give you leverage 2 to 1 or 4 to 1 and you need to be approved for that leverage. Uh, in this market you don't have to be approved uh, and you must may pay all the margin calls. Uh, here the margin calls, they're going to close your position, you're never going to be negative uh, in this market. There's two prices um, for each currency pair. There's a buy price, which is called also the ask price, and there's a set price, which is also called the bid price. And the difference between the buy and the, the bid or the ask, or the buy and the sell price, is as a spread, and this is what the broker uh, charges for the transaction. In this market, uh, in the stock market, there's also a bid and ask price for the stock, uh, and on top of that, they charge commission. In this market, they don't charge you commissions. Okay, uh, the most, uh, you, you know, the only thing you're going to pay is the difference between the buy and the sell, which is called the spread. For example, here, this is a platform uh, that we use. This is uh, FXCM. This is one of the brokers that we use. And as you can see here, they give you the dealing rates. For example, the Euro US dollar. And it says if I wanted to buy the dollar, obviously this is not live, this is just an example. Uh, it's at 155.42. Means it takes a dollar and 55 cents to buy one euro. And the last two numbers are the pips, price to interest points, the one one hundredths of a penny. Now, if I wanted to sell that price, I could sell it at 159, 155.39. Means there's a difference of three pips on that currency, and the spreads change depending on the volatility of the uh, market. But usually, they stay around uh, for currency pairs. They stay around that uh, that range. That's why we focus on the six majors because they're the ones that the smallest uh, spreads means the smallest cost per transaction. So, what does this mean? If I buy at 155.42 and I press this button, buy, I have to wait to sell to exit profit, so it means I'm, I start minus three pips, because I could sell three pips smaller. It's like if the broker sold you the currency, three pips more expensive. Now you get a wait, and if this goes above 42, okay, uh, the sell price on the euro, that means I make profit. So if it goes to 52, this number, I, and I bought at 42, and this is constantly changing. You're going to see uh, when we go later on in the lessons, as we go live, uh, this currently changing. If it goes to 52, I made 10 pip uh, profit. Okay, so there's a buy and a sell, and the difference is called the spread. So there's a 3 pip spread. That's what the broker uh, makes. There's two ways to make money in this market. You can make it by luck. And obviously, like everything, sooner or later your luck runs out. And the difference about buying and selling, that's how most traders on the world trade. I, I see most traders and I tell them, oh, I, I bought this stock or I bought this. from I saw it on the news. It was going to go up. Um, or my friend told me or my cousin told me or my brother-in-law told me. Um, obviously, they're buying and selling. I tell them by luck. And I tell them if you want to do that, you're better off going to Las Vegas and playing your money because if you lose your money here, you're not going to enjoy your weekend. At least if you go to Vegas and lose your money, you enjoyed a, a weekend. The right way to do this is through education and mentorship. And that's what you guys are taking your time. You're going to learn. I'm going to teach you all these strategies uh, to make educated decisions. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to put this all in life through my mentorship. Um, and that's how you learn. Everything in life, you learn one through education and then learning how to apply it uh, through a mentor. And I hope I could be your mentor. And I'm excited that you uh, took the time to invest in yourself and learn how to trade. This is a real fascinating market. It's a really could change your life and it can create you financial independence, but you got to educate yourself first and learn how to trade uh, this market. Uh, and the reality here is if you don't understand how to trade and you become the people who are trading by luck, that's why 90% fail. Just ask uh, friends around you, uh, how do they trade? Uh, everybody says I invested in the market or invested it, and none of them took their time to invest it. That's why they fall on the 90% that uh, fail. The 10% who are making money and find somebody who's making money in the market, they're going to tell you they made it through understanding the market and taking their time. Uh, to educate yourself. You guys are going to be up here, obviously, because you guys are taking the time 
uh, to educate yourself. Okay, my name is Vincent Luce with Forex Trading Institute, and I'll see you in the next lesson.